Hello, and welcome to Level Up Stronger. The world is continuously changing at a very rapid pace. How can we all gain the competitive edge in our industries and thrive in them? What if you knew without the shadow of a doubt that self-education and access to forward-thinking experts in your field could catapult you toward success faster than ever before? The spaces we inhabit can inspire us, protect us, define us, and connect us. So we all play a valuable role in shaping their future. We plan to take a deep dive into various industries and careers. What are the future of the industries? What are the barriers to entry? And learn from the very people who thrive in them. We will take you behind the scenes to the people, products, and processes that keep industries thriving. In this podcast, we look forward to inspire and empower everyone to take thoughtful, educated risks and apply what we've learned in our lives so we can all level up stronger. In today's episode, we have the pleasure of speaking with Melinda Schnabel, Vice President of Housing for IEI. The company provides a wide range of facilities management and environmental services, including housing quality inspections for numerous public housing authorities throughout the nation. Melinda and her team have faced major work challenges during the pandemic and had to find creative solutions to still be able to provide the same stellar services to the housing authorities that they assist. IEI and Melinda's team pivoted to implement virtual housing quality inspections, which had never been done before. Once a virtual process was developed and the team worked tirelessly to eliminate and minimize client backlog, this critical work allowed the timely placement of program participants and ensures safe living conditions are maintained in the housing programs. This pandemic-related pivot to implement new technology has been so successful that it has likely changed the industry forever. Thank you for joining joining us today, Melinda. Thank you for inviting me. it's, It's a pleasure. Thank you. Absolutely. So Melinda, I'd like to start off by asking you to tell us a little bit about yourself, including your background and how you got involved in housing inspections. Yeah, so I'm from Arizona and uh, I grew up in a very small town in Arizona. Um, My family were farm hens, so we didn't own a farm. We just worked on a lot of farms when I was young. And um, we've always uh, been very hands-on and often did our own projects, including our home remodels and repairs. And uh, so early on, I was was able to gain some knowledge of how building components are meant to be maintained and repaired, as well as my husband and I, we've always found a way to be those DIY people who find projects around the house, even sometimes when they're not even needed. Uh, We we like to live in some bit of construction at any given moment. And so we, we've done that over the years. And uh, prior to working with IEI, uh, when I started back in, I, I believe at the inception around 2004, I worked with a variety of other inspection service companies and uh, did mold, lead, asbestos, uh, several inspections um, type services. And um, so it was, um, you know, I had a variety of responsibilities on contracts over the years and have had a lot of opportunity with IEI to grow with the company. And uh, primarily early on, I worked on our I HUD contracts for lead inspections and, um, you know, just, just done a variety of things throughout the years with IEI and, and other companies, which have been really based in the inspection, property inspection industry. Thanks, Melinda. Can you tell us why these inspections are required and where they are performed? Sure. So housing standard inspections are meant to um, create safe housing for Section 8 or voucher program participants. What that means is basically that 30% of the, the monthly income of an eligible individual will be paid by them and the rest of it, the government will pay for them. So the goal of these inspections is to make sure that they're living in safe environments. So our focus when we go in and do these inspections is uh, on the the building components and the overall health and safety of the the unit and for the family who lives in it. Awesome, can you give us an idea of the magnitude of the disruption of the inspection program due to COVID? 
COVID was huge. Obviously, when you're when you interact with the public and you have to go and and physically go into homes every day where there's where there's people, the COVID really put a put a stop to that. And um, we were we were prior to to COVID, we were going in physically into every unit that we had for our clients and inspecting them individually with the landlord, the tenant, and, and other family members sometimes in the unit. And so we realized, of course, that we weren't able gonna, we were not gonna be able to do that with COVID because it just made it, uh, you know, of course we want to adhere to all of the, the mandates and social distancing um, requirements. And so that was not something we were gonna be able to do moving forward. So, um, you know, an, an inspector could do 15 to 20 inspections a day, depending on the geographical location. So being out and, and exposing yourself to that many people is, is something that with COVID just was not doable. So how did this idea of performing the inspections virtually, how did that idea originate? Yeah, so when we we originally started to learn about COVID, we started thinking that, you know, this may be something where we might have to sit out for a few weeks. And, uh, you know, like all of us, you know, we were we were thinking, OK, so April, May, we'll take a break. We'll, we'll do a little little, you know, easy time, get caught up on everything, maybe a little vacation and then we'll get back to work. But we found out, of course, <laughs> that that wasn't going to happen that um, we weren't going to be out for a few weeks. And when, when it came, we came to the realization that we weren't going to be able to get back out there and our clients' inspections were starting to pile up and these homes were not being inspected, we had to come up with something else to do. And it was, it was a difficult situation because again, we were going out into these properties and that was the norm. And that's the way it's, these inspections have always been performed. So to figure out a new process that would allow us to do these comprehensive inspections, but yet not take us into the homes was, some, it was, was a real challenge. And so we started working with one of our smaller uh, clients who has a, a pretty small inventory and developed the the virtual inspection process with them. About how long did it take to really get this program up and running? You know, it uh, it didn't take that long actually. It was it was kind of one of those things where we just looked at the the goals and objectives of what the inspection is. I mean, HUD has very distinctive uh, objectives for inspections, and so we looked at how we could accomplish those objectives in uh, a way that would still the requirements of, of the inspection, but do it in a manner that we, you know, would be safe for everyone. So we, we sat down and we kind of looked at each of those and thought about how and what it would take to get those done. And so we started thinking a little outside the box and is there a way to do these through a video app or through some kind of virtual process? And if we did them through this virtual process, how would that look and, and what would that entail for the, for the individual inside the unit that had to assist us? So in developing that process, what are some of the challenges that you faced? And you mentioned you kind of had to think outside the box. Could you tell us about that and maybe an example of how you had to be creative and coming up with a, a solution? Yeah, we did have some challenges find, finding ways to to utilize different items that would be readily available mm -hmm. in the unit, um, the everyday things you'd have around your house that a tenant or the representative, whoever was going to assist us with the virtual inspection could utilize to, to accomplish some of the things that our inspector would normally do. For instance, something as easy as, you know, how do you test an outlet to see that it's working properly? So what can a tenant use to do that? So we had to think about those types of things. And, you know, how do you test a smoke alarm and to make sure that it's functioning when it's on the ceiling, as you know, could be, some people don't have a stepladder. Certainly we didn't want to tell people climb on chairs and things of that nature. 
So we had to think, okay, so what did they have available to them? So, you know, it would be something as simple as get your broom out of your kitchen and use your broom handle to, you know, hit the test button on the smoke alarms and, uh, you know, get a small appliance that got a hairdryer and carry it around to the outlets and plug it in and turn it on so we can hear it functioning. Uh, some of the bigger obstacles were probably just finding the right communication methods with the participants and, and educating them on um, the smartphone technology that was necessary to do the job. And um, so, you know, making sure that everyone had the, the, the proper apps that um, it was needed to do that video video inspection. Um, you know, other than that, it was just uh, our clients making sure that they understood our process our, and what we were wanting to offer to them and bringing them on board and, and gaining their trust to, to believe that we could do this successfully utilizing these new methods. From a user standpoint, how has this worked out for the end client and the homeowners? I mean, have there been major challenges? You mentioned, you know, you're having to teach people how to do, how to use smartphones at this point. How, how, where have the challenges been there? Yeah. So some people just, you know, you would think that we experience this now with technology, but a lot of people haven't. And some people don't have the, the smartphone technology available. So we, what we did is we developed a process of just educating these uh, tenants, landlords, and, and other folks, and just letting them know that this was something they were absolutely capable of doing, and that we were going to work with them every step of the way to make sure that it, it could be done. So we, we developed first and foremost a, a um, communication that went out to everyone that told them exactly what we were doing, going to do and how they would be helping in the process. Uh, there was instructions there on, you know, if you have an Android phone, we need you to get this app. If you have an iPhone, then you have, you have this app that you need to, to have ready on your phone. And um, we actually found that people wanted to be helpful. They, they wanted to be a part of this process. And we, we had really good feedback from, from the participants, landlords, and I think it was really a good thing for them. I, you know, a lot of times when you're in these programs, you're at the mercy of, of you know, everyone coming into your home and just, you know, these inspectors come in, they do the inspections. Maybe they don't always tell you as much information as you would like to have. And this put them in the process. And I, I think that that was a little bit empowering for them. Melinda, I cannot help but ask what is maybe one of the funniest things you have experienced during these virtual inspections. I know we've all been on video a lot more than usual. If you have anything you'd like to, to share with us. Yeah, there's some things I probably shouldn't share with you um, because um, we all have stories. I, I, I promise you we have weekly meetings and, and there are sometimes stories that... Um, are, are interesting, but um, one of the things that happened recently is I was doing an inspection and um, this gentleman was assisting me. And at one point I asked him to stand back in his living room area and give me an overview of the room so I could, could see what he was seeing. And I, I noticed that in the middle of his living room floor, he had a motorcycle, a full-size motorcycle torn apart, and it was um, in many pieces around the room. Um, there was grease, there was oil, there was tools. Uh, the, <laughs> some of the outlets or light fixtures had fingerprints of grease on them. And um, I, I said, you know, sir, we... we we can't have our motorcycle torn apart in the middle of the living room. And I said that as, as politely as I could, because of course you have to be sensitive in these situations. And um, he said, yeah, I knew you were going to be upset about that. And I said, well, you know, we have a standard that we have the keep, you know, in these situations and we hold the landlord to very high standards and we have to hold you to those same standards 
And so we need to get this taken care of. And he said, you know, it was hot outside. I started working on it out there, but it just got hotter and hotter. And so I moved inside and he said, I knew it was a bad idea, but, um, you know, it was just really hot. It was just, he, he said, he, it was darn hot out there. And being from Arizona, I could relate to that. But um, I explained to him that um, he would have to do any future work on that motorcycle outside. That's super fun. Um, as far as com- the COVID is concerned, obviously the pandemic continues and we have all these new variants that are continue to impact us and new regulations that are coming down. What is going to be the impact long-term on virtual inspections and what do you think will continue? How will the industry continue to change? So I think with all of the bad that COVID brought us, it did force us to look outside to to the processes that we've been doing and how we need to change them. And I don't think that's going away. Long after COVID is, is under control, and um, we've moved past it, I think we're still going to have things that we've learned that we can utilize for the future. And in the inspecting, inspection industry, I think that is one of the biggest things that we have, um, have learned is that the way it's always been done in the past doesn't necessarily have to be the way we do it in the future. So I I believe that it's really opened our eyes to kind of think about what we can do differently. And um, there's a a lot of opportunity for change and to um, kind of move move it into the next level of inspections. And so I I don't think that the virtual inspection process or some, some version of that is going to go away. I think there'll always be room for in-person inspections. There'll always be some level where that is necessary, but we can change the way we're doing this and um, just kind of modernize it or or find some more uh, revolutionary ways of doing these inspections that maybe we would not have thought of otherwise if we didn't have a pandemic in our, you know, to, to push us. You had mentioned that participants felt empowered in a Mm -hmm. way. What other kind of feedback have you received from participants on this process and their experience with it? Yeah, I I think that it's been good for for them for a lot of reasons. I also think it's been good for our clients. I I think it's good for our participants in particular because, you know, I I don't know if if any of you have ever had a repair person come into your home or or if you've lived in a situation where you're a tenant and your landlord has the right to come in and do an inspection, but there can be a lot of, you know, concern with that. And it also can monopolize your time. I, I, you know, I think about the cable guy who says, I'll be there sometime between eight and four. And you sit there all day waiting for them to come. And then, you know, they show up at four 30. And uh, so I think that, um, you know, it's, it's really one of those things where they feel like they have more control. It, it's better for their schedules. It, um, you know, they're more prepared and they just really have been happy with the way we've done it. Uh, you know, I hear all the time for the participants, you know, this was kind of fun because now I understand why you do this inspection and, you know, what's important. And I, I think that I think that they enjoy that. Um, for our clients, I think it offers a, a efficiency and, and cost savings to them. It does that for our clients. It does it for us. And across the board, I think it's um, a much better experience. Uh, you know, where we are as inspectors, we sometimes go out and do 15, 20 of these a day. But that's with with traveling. And so it really can give you a really long day when you've got, you know, a a bunch of traffic or construction, or maybe inspections, some take longer than others. But this allows you to fit a lot more inspections into your day because it eliminates that travel time. So I I think it's, it's really a more efficient way of doing things. So are you able to keep to a schedule much better then? And are they fairly predictable? The, is it more predictable than the length of time that they'll last when you're doing these virtually? Absolutely. And the reason why is because, again, we don't have that travel time in between, which is every day unpredictable. 
and you never know what you're going to face out there. You know, one one accident on the freeway can can delay your entire day. And so if you have tenants or landlords who are waiting at a property for you and you're you're stuck in traffic, it really derails everyone's schedule. And you know, people have to pick up their kids from school. Um, they have, you know, other responsibilities, doctor's appointments and things of that nature. So this really allows them to have a scheduled inspection. And if for some reason, when, when our inspectors are ready to do the inspection and they call and they can't do it, then, you know, there's a little bit of flexibility. We, we a lot of times will have someone say, you know, I'm still driving home from work. I, I need to get there and I'll, I'll be happy to do this, but I need 15 minutes. Our inspectors will say, that's all right. I'll go on to another, another call and then I'll call you back and we'll take care of it. So I think it's, it's really been a, it's a, it's a, it's a good thing for them. It's, it's a good thing for all of us. So you guys originally implemented this because one pandemic also um, you've allowed, this has allowed you to help some of the housing authorities that did not want to push off the inspections that they needed to do because there's been a moratorium, right? on right. these inspections or a deadline right. that, that they had got an extension essentially. So going forward, how could, and, and I imagine there are some housing authorities that are sitting right on an extensive amount of inspections. If one of those housing authorities wanted to figure out how to implement this or get a, in touch with you, what would be the process to, to setting this up? Yeah. So I, I think that, um, you know, the best way, to uh, first off, you're correct that there are a lot of housing authorities out there that are still today sitting on a very large inventory of properties. I think there was a bit of misunderstanding that this moratorium meant you didn't have to do the inspections. But what it meant is you get a you you have you could skip doing them at the time, but they are going to have to be done. They're not just going to to skip them completely. You're going to have to get those caught up at some point if you're out there and you have an inventory as a housing authority. So it's it's good to get started now. Certainly, if you haven't already, you need to get started taking care of those now. So if, if someone's interested in, in talking with us about how we can help do that, give me a call. I'd be happy to speak with you. My, and they, I can be reached at 443-583-8794. Just give me a call. I'd be happy to talk to you. Thanks, Melinda. And you had mentioned that these are not going away anytime soon and probably the, the path forward. Can you tell me what you see as the next steps for optimizing this process and how it might um, move forward in the future to become even more efficient or effective or accurate? Yeah, so we've already moved into what we're, we're calling the hybrid version of this with some of our clients. And what that means is version is a inspection process where we do the virtual inspections and we have the in-persons when, so whenever someone's not able to do the virtual, then we will have to go out and do the, the um, in-person. But I think that as we move forward, there's ways that we can eliminate more and more of those in-person inspections. And we're working to do that right now at IEI. And a process that's going to inspections are done across the board. And um, again, with COVID, we, we started really kind of thinking about how we could change things. And it's, it's, you know, we've always looked at innovative technology and look forward to what's going to be, you know, the norm for the future and um, doing inspections virtually or in a way where you can do it with maybe an app um, that would um, allow a tenant to even take more of a role in the inspection process is something that we're currently working on. So we're excited about that. There's a lot of, of cool things that are happening. And um, you know I can't go into great detail because we're still in that process, but I will tell you that there's exciting things coming um, from IEI. And um, we're working very hard to, to find ways to change this process entirely. That sounds awesome. Thank you so much for joining us today for this episode of Level Up Stronger. And thanks to Melinda and your team for coming up with an innovative and creative solution to overcome a major challenge faced by COVID. 
um, and for helping to keep people in their environment safe. We appreciate your dedication and sharing your experience with us. Thank you. And, you know, that is our goal. And that's what we want to do over everything. The goal is to keep families in safe, healthy homes. And so we're, we feel honored to be able to play a part in that. Thank you. Thank you for joining us on Level Up Stronger. For references to resources mentioned in this episode and to receive updates on future podcasts, check us out on social media or at levelupstronger.com. And remember, each time we take risk, educate ourselves, and apply what we've learned to our lives, we level up stronger. Each time we level up stronger, we have the opportunity to reach back and contribute to someone else's success too. 